Hey everyone, welcome in. I'm Jess. It is Monday. Monday, Monday. Such a beautiful day. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Hope all of you are having a fantastic Monday. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. We had quite the weekend. It was... It was good. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. Overall, very nice. Mm -hmm. My dad came home from a hospital. He's been in yes. for a couple of months. Yep. So we were all very excited to get him home. Yep. And do a little welcome home and... He was very excited, so that went well. Uh, what did we do Saturday? Um, you had your anime watch party. Yes. So, friend, some friends of ours, friends of mine from Twitch, uh, are hosting anime parties on Discord, and we watch. We're watching animes for the next few Saturdays, which are going to be really, really great. Um, and then we. Oh my gosh. <laughs> getting old. We're getting old. Uh, we went grocery shopping. Um, yeah. We did go wine tasting. Yes, that was awesome. That was, <laughs> we were like, we need a break from adulting real quick. We're going to go drink wine. It was excellent. So that's what Beautiful. happened. Um, and tasty. And it was tasty. And I can't imagine doing anything else on a Saturday afternoon when you're just sitting there going, hey, what do I want to do? It's four o'clock in the afternoon. I think I'm going to go drink wine. Booze. Because that's just what happened, really. It was quite amusing, I have to say. Uh, so, yeah. So, that's what happened. Uh, welcome into Slivers and Timey and anyone else that's working lurking. Uh, or maybe you're off work right now. Maybe it's the evening time for a lot of you. Um, I did like that when we were done wine tasting and we're heading home. You're like... I want a sandwich. <laughs> okay. Like, okay. So funny thing, usually when I go wine tasting, we tr we usually have a flight of some kind. And so we're tasting, you know, five or six different wines. But this time we went to a place that we have a wine club membership with that we've had for years. And we decided just to have a glass. Mm -hmm. Each of us just had a glass. So usually when I wine taste and I, I'm like having like all these different flavor palettes happening, I usually end up going for something savory and with a little spice. So a lot of times I want noodles, noodles of some kind, some kind of We're Thai food. I want noodles. Yeah. Th thai food or Chinese food, uh, Vietnamese food, any like something like that with noodles. But this time, I don't know why it must have been the the wine that we were drinking but i just wanted something bready something bready to kind of like soak up the wine you know something to like give me all the feels and things uh so yeah so we ended up stopping off at a sandwich shop and got some sandwiches and he's like i don't care i love sandwiches yeah no complaints so yeah 10 out of 10 great night so that's what we did um we also are excited to get some new games to the table. We do have some things coming in that we're excited to show you all. We have a few over there on the side table that we need to uh, get to the table because they have been graciously given to me as review copies. And so I want to show content for these great games. So the next few Mondays after we wrap up this Gloom City, we will go ahead and uh, do some adventuring in in those other games so mm -hmm. yeah be fun. right now i'm uh eating my pre-dinner snack popcorn i know I, I mentioned on facebook how i wish that movie theaters had better food options and the popcorn to me always seems a little bit like over salted even though you say no butter like it, for me they always just seems like a little bit much yeah so this kind that we're popping is just they call it like home style butter it was funny because on the boxes there's like three different options there's like home style butter movie butter and extra butter and you're like what if i just I... don't want any butter is there one that just says plain no because you don't want a box that says plain on it. i'm not a butter fan 
So when we go to the movie theaters, Jess graciously allows me to say no butter. Although I don't know that you want more butter anyway. No. I I don't want butter. Um, so yes, the uh, box from the store labeled extra butter sounds gross. So hard pass. It's like you might as well just pack butter in a box and just sell it to me that way. And they already do. It's called the butter aisle. <laughs> Or you actually get butter. <laughs> you know, there's a, you know, those eating contests that they do. How many hot dogs can you eat in yeah. an hour? Yeah, yeah. yeah, they have one with sticks of butter. Oh, how many sticks of butter? And at first you think the hot dogs one is gross. Oh, man. Yeah, straight up sticks of butter. Let's see if we can find what the record is. Don't they have those, um, those, uh, at like, fairs and carnivals and stuff where they have like everything deep fried and they have like deep fried butter don't they have that we're like probably deep fried twinkies and deep fried oreos and all of that stuff yeah not fun not tasty so <laughs> on a stick yeah anything really huh slivers we'll just put it on a stick and deep fry it for you are you, David's looking up the butter record, which to me is I'm slightly appalled by that. I mean, I don't mind butter on things like toast. Butter on toast. Or butter on a baked potato. You know, stuff that like makes sense, but, or for me. Not very much between deep fried butter and cheese. Yes and no, Slivers. <laughs> I don't know if this is still the record. Okay. But at one point it was. Uh, this gentleman ate seven quarter pound sticks of salted butter in five minutes. No, 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 no. That's so gross. That's so much butter. That's so gross. Oh, my word. <laughs> And, like, what do you want to tell your kids? Like, yeah, I ate this much salted butter. What do you want to be known for? I'm the Butter King. Ugh, gross. Abe Froman, Salted <laughs> King of Chicago. I'm not a doctor, but I don't think that's healthy. I know. I know. Ugh, gosh. Oh, I'm also... One of the stick, one of, the stick of butter is, like eight a, ounces, is a quarter right? cup. No, it's half, a half a cup. Half a cup. Yeah, like, when you get the... the Butter packages that come in a stick. I think they're half cup. I think. Yeah. So a quarter pound. Is that like maybe one that's stick? A, maybe that's a quarter pound of butter. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> gross, 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 gross. <laughs> also, friends, I just got a new seat cushion on my seat, and I'm like very excited. So, so I might be. I might be. Doing a little riding. Riding the waves. Riding the waves. Of comfort. Get, yeah. So I apologize. This is not going to, if you get motion sickness, I'll try to uh, <laughs> sustain my excitement. But yeah, it feels really nice. Okay. Um, we're going to get down to the table here, David, because we need to figure out what the hell is going on in Gloom City. Um, we are currently in chapter two. And if you hadn't seen on the uh, screen title, for the stream, it is spoilery. Yes, right? Right, Slivers? Oh my gosh. I like, <laughs> David was ordering some a seat cover for his office chair online. And, and he was like, do you need anything on Amazon? I was like, you know what? I need a new chair. And he was like, why do you need a new chair? I was like, cause there's no more butt. There's like no butt cushion in here. And so he came downstairs and sat on it and you, he said you could feel the bars. Like on your hips. Yeah. Like when you sit on it. And so it's he's like, good. that's not good. He's <laughs> like, they have like memory foam cushions. And I was like, what is this magic you're talking about? <laughs> so, yes. So I got one. And now it just came in today. So I'm like, it's a whole new chair. <laughs> it's a whole new chair. Yes, I don't have one of those fancy like gaming chairs with the big thing and the speakers that come out and the lights and... I mean, that would be really cool to have, but I have a new butt cushion. <laughs> uh, yeah, so here we are. Sometimes it's all you need. Sometimes so all you need. 
A little cushion for your butt. And I will also mention too, friends, we are deciding to just read through the adventures um, instead of us having us uh, listen. Because we were having a little bit of issues last time we played. My phone was kind of being weird. Um, so, so most of it would play, but some of it would just freeze and I'd have to restart the program. So we're just going to go the old fashioned way and read it. And uh, probably have to use a lot of beverages to kind of <laughs> hydrate ourselves. But happy butt, best butt. <laughs> yes. Yes. See, Slivers knows. Slivers knows what is happening. Okay. So for those that are catching up, we went to, um, we went back to the asylum because there was a lady who was admitted and then it was her mom or her grandma. Ooh, I think it was grandma. No, mother. Waitress's mother. Oh, right. So... The, the waitress's mom was at the asylum. Yep. And she had these reading glasses that were a gift. We were told that something, if we could find something that belonged to the waitress's mother, then that might grease the palms of a security guard who I think is in love with her. Yes. Um, and while we're roaming the streets, we found a crowbar. And there was a locked cabinet back at ye old insane asylum that we couldn't open. So we put two and two together, made five. Made five, broke it open, and, and found like, these reading glasses. Crowbar seems like a good thing so to open a All the cabinet. math is coming up, Millhouse but, here. Yeah, we got some glasses, and now we're going to see what the security guard will see be. See about there. a security guard. All right, so we'll go there. And what number are the glasses? The glasses. Who's got them? Oh, I do. 50. 5922. 50. So in these games, if you haven't played or haven't watched any of our other run throughs, we have items. So, for example, those old reading glasses, they have a number on them. And then there are locations uh, that we go to that have various uh, settings, events, things that you can do, interact with. And so you can go to 922 and just talk to the security guard, which we already did and learned that he was looking for something. Which we found, and now we can sit, add five zero and nine two two together, and that creates a new entry from the book that we can go. Uh, so it's kind of a living game. Like as you find things, you can marry the two things up together. It's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Okay. It says to read entry one three seven. Okay. Okay. I can't wait for somebody to come in and see Sliver's comment that says "Happy butt." Best butt. <laughs> I know. They'll be like, what the heck? But if they know slivers, they'd be like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> he likes to troll. That's what it, that's oh. what it means. He likes to troll. <laughs> okay. For a long time. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay. For a long time, his gaze rests upon the eyeglasses. Each time he reads the inscription, his face grows softer and more thoughtful. Jen's mother often read to her when she was a child, before her time in St. Mary's. The eyeglasses were a gift that meant an awful lot to Jen. It joined them together. They may have cheered her spirits. He smiled hesitantly. Thank you. It's my turn now. Wait here. I'll be right back. With that, John makes his way to the nearest police station and returns a little later. Oh, that's right, because we had a license plate that, that we, we needed, needed to run. run. And we needed somebody to go to the police station because we're actually disgraced cops. Yeah. So we couldn't go in ourselves. So security guard's going to take care of that for us. Yeah. Uh, okay. John makes his way to the nearest police station and returns later. Miss Blake thinks it belongs to a Ford Mustang. Black. The name and address matched to it are Ernest Webb to Gloom Boulevard. Well, remember, who we think is the perp is little Tommy Webb, who was unfortunately one of the uh, kiddos in the asylum that wasn't treated very well. So, Webb, Ernest Webb, you think? That must be the father of the orphan Thomas Webb. I hope this helps, he says. Then he looks you right in the eye. Would you be willing to take the glasses to my fiancé? 
Return Adventure Card 84 to the box. 84. Uh, the license plate. Okay. Take Location Card K and place it face down to the right of Location Card R. From now on, you can go to location card K whenever you like. When you go there for the first time, reveal location card K. Oh, am I not supposed to show this? It goes face down. Gotcha. Face down. Nobody saw that. Nobody saw that. To his fiance. That's awkward. Yeah. Here, got this from your fiance. Okay, do you want to give them to her? Oh, so we go... Do 50 and her and mm -hmm. see what happens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, she was a little standoffish at first. This might break down some boundaries, doors, well, boundaries in a good way. All right. She go. also seemed tired too because oh, yeah. she was, it looked like she was overworked there. All right. So we're going to 5901. Okay. You want to read this time? Sure. 5901. Uh, is location card K already displayed? No. Nope. If so, in a, otherwise 990. Okay. So we had two different options depending on what was up with K. The eyeglasses are already halfway out when it occurs to you that you should first show it to John. Otherwise, you won't be able to get to miss. You won't be able to get to miss Blake. Oh, maybe this does mean it's already exposed because it's saying give him to the security guard. Right. So we already did that. Okay. So we'll go. But let's read. Let's read K then. Well, this, does displayed mean flipped or just out? Oh, I don't know. Okay. So. Well, let's just continue. Yeah. Here's 890. Jennifer, can I speak to you for a moment? You go with her to the back of the bar, pull out the eyeglasses and hand them to her. Here, I'm supposed to bring these to you from your fiance, John. She takes the glasses and looks at them. Her eyes grow large and then fill with tears. She leans heavily against the table, seems to struggle with herself, then says in a choked voice, How on earth did he find that? Did he happen to go into that hellhole? She stops and continues bitterly. Welcome to St. Mary's Mental Asylum. What a joke. This lobotomy is a safe method of treatment, they claimed. No uh -oh. wonder that the patients started spending all their time on stories and toys. Uh-oh. After they were so badly betrayed by those people. Return Adventure Card 50 to the box. Uh-oh. So she takes the glasses. Lobotomizing. They were doing some lobotomies, and it really messed up her mom. Uh-oh. <clears throat> Sounds like it kind of turned people into children. Mm-mm. Okay. Is so that that's it? it? That's it. All right, should we go to K? Yeah. I think we've done everything. Okay. At the indicated address, there is a rundown theater whose facade has lost all of the glitz of its former glory days. Remnants of old posters, 321, here, promoting long gone performances hang on filthy window panes and the glass of the ticket booth lies in a thousand shards on the counter and the ground. Hmm. 322. So take a boost back there. The sequential number at the entryway of the building next door, which must have been magnificent at one time, seems to indicate that you are in the right place. 323. Where is that? Oh, over here. The Webb family house was torn down following the devastating fire. The Trinity Theater was erected in its place. Mm. But this, too, has gone to seed since then, much like the city itself. Oh, no. Two solid boards bar entry into the interior of the theater. 324. Yep. That's also where the trail of blood leads that you, leads that you kept coming across on your way over here, ultimately ending at a bucket. Ugh. So was the trail of blood real, or was there a bucket of blood that he was leading us here with? Ah. This guy's playing mind games. Yeah. I don't like you, Thomas. All right. But I do like my pillow. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Uh, Nope. That's it. Okay. So where would you like to go? So um, we have old posters, 
I do have a poster. I also have a poster myself, so I would like to read that poster. 321. 321. Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, Breck's Rise and Fall of the City of Mahogany, and No Exit by Jean-Paul Sartre. Sartre? 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 Yeah. How do you say that one? Before it closed, this theater staged its share of well-known works and still adorns itself with mementos of those shiny moments from the past. Hmm. Great names and stories, however, failed to prevent the populace from tarnishing the symbols of a once-proud city with graffiti and vandalism. Beautiful Juliet has had a red goatee painted onto her face. Oh, no! <laughs> her lover has had his head cut out of the poster, and on everything, there's a large, dark, red face with eyes made of two lines and a broadly grinning mouth Ugh. whose color has long since faded into a dry, lumpy mass. Gross. Gross. Do you want to merge your poster with that? Okay. Is that a thing, do you think? Okay. Three, eight, three, two, one. See if there's a spot where that poster might have been or something. So here's my theater poster, everyone. We found that at the Asylum Sound. Three eight three two one. Uh huh. Uh nope, no entries. Okay. Okay. I don't remember where we found that. If it was in the cabinet or whatever. Okay, where would you like to go? Um. So I was over here. Well, I probably won't go yet to this, but I, at some point I'm thinking the crowbar and those boards yeah. is probably a good thing. Good thing. Um, I'll come check out this like address or whatever it's talking about. The okay. sequential. I like sequences. Okay. The building to the right of the theater has suffered the same decline as the theater itself. Its drawn curtains, however, lead you to believe that it is still inhabited. But whoever lives there obviously places no importance on outward appearances. Even now, you can see where the flames of the fire got too close to the theater's neighbor. There is some that, something that gives you pause. Ooh. If the fire broke out in the upper floor, as it is rumored, and then spread to the ground floor... Why are the burn marks more obvious in the lower portion of the building than up above? Hmm. Why indeed? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I'm but... not a forensic scientist. <laughs> I'm a cop. All right. Um, three, two, four is the boards, right? Okay. I'm going to go to three, two, two, the ticket window. The windows of the ticket booth have been broken, and long, pointed shards protrude like stalagmites from the edges. Nobody took the trouble to clean up their little room, so you even find a bit of change and a still-sealed bottle of water. Ooh! Just as you are about to pull your head back out of the opening, you hear a shrill giggling above you. Caught with your guard down, you look up just in time to see a bottle flying in your direction, which bursts open with a crash right in front of you. Jerking back instinctively, you unfortunately slice your forearm on the edge of one of the shards. No! Cursing loudly, you make a hasty retreat. Dang it. Take two injuries. No! <laughs> that jerk. And take adventure cards 52 and 82. Aw. Jerk. Creepy dude threw a bottle at you. All right, so we have some change, more change, and still mineral water. Hmm. So we have a lot of interesting things. I have a rusty knife. I have a riddle. A flashlight, a crowbar. I have billiard chalk. So I was thinking about this, billiard chalk and a fine brush. Yeah. Could that be like fingerprints somewhere? Yeah. Grind up the billiard chalk and dust it and mm -hmm. dust them for some prints. Okay. Um, I have a family photo. So, it's all kinds of stuff. Do you think the family photo in this building are a match? Oh, yeah, because look at all those squares. In oh, yeah. Right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Do you want to see if that does anything? Two, four, three, two, three. Yeah, let's try that. Two, four, three, two, three, please. Uh, no. Hmm. Good try. Is two, four with any of these? Uh, two, four, three. No. Okay. What's nice? When you have the book, you can kind of... Cheat. Cheat. I call it being investigative, as we're cops. So if you see where you tried to match something up with something else and it's not quite right you might be able to see like oh you were just a little off right so it gives you another idea right okay where do you want to go next you want to break open the boards no i guess i'll go look at the bucket of whatever three, three two, two five. five okay move your person from the train station through little gamora to here you have followed the trail leading to a bucket next to the entrance. It is still filled with a sticky red liquid, but it is not blood. Ooh, okay. Was this just another piece of bait set out by Webb to lure you here? Furious, you give the bucket a kick, which makes the remaining contents slosh around enough to reveal something else inside. You have already started to gag as you discover with relief that it's just the hand of a department store mannequin. <laughs> okay gross still gross all right break it open love do we need to get this hand out no and no it doesn't say to take a card so i don't think we can well, i was just wondering if we use any of our stuff okay all right going so in. crowbar well, three three two four first please okay uh, the way the boards have been put over this door, they are covering the doorknob. No matter how hard you try, you just can't reach it. Okay. 51, 3, 2, 4. Okay. Desperate cut times call for desperate measures, right? So, you wedge the crowbar between the boards and apply all of your force to pry the slats from the door. A cracking sound, and the wood slowly comes loose. But then, the nails abruptly give way, and all of a sudden, you find yourself with your back on the shard-covered floor. Oh, no. In your surprise, you let go of the crowbar, which, as luck would have it, slides across the asphalt into the oh. drain system. Oh. At least the door is open now and you can enter the theater. Take two injuries and re return card 51 to the box. You were too strong, love. You just busted it open. Threw the crowbar away. Ding it. Wait, that's it? No. And then oh. read 870. Okay. <clears throat> An unexpected cracking sound from inside the foyer puts you on guard. It fades into a sort of murmur until eventually you can hear clear words. Welcome, welcome to my grand finale. Webb clears his throat and the unpleasantly loud noise reverberates from the walls of the theater into the street. You try to make out the location from which he is speaking, but he seems to be everywhere and nowhere at once. Mm. Something inside me was hoping that you would get away and follow my trail here. The act as such is a lot of fun, but with an audience there. A pregnant pause, and it gradually dawns on you where the voice is coming from. Speakers above the door crackle softly. So enter and become a spectacle with a tale as old as that of humanity itself. Blood and circus. A crash. In the background of the recording, something falls heavily and a woman screams ab above the noise. You hear Webb's manic laugh and then the speaker goes silent. Now it is clear. This is the place where it will be decided and how your search will end. For you, for the hostages, for Tom. This ends chapter two. 
For each adventure card with the exclamation point, you will lose one point. Note this on your adventure sheet in the rules. Now return all the cards to the box. Uh, X3, A2. Oh, so these cards we're going to re return to the box. X3. You have X3? No. This is what we had before. Do we return X3? Where are those? Where are the letters? Oh, here. No, we didn't get X3. Okay. We never found it. Okay. So whatever that was. A2. Return A2. A2. Uh, A2. Oh, saving the game? I didn't mean, maybe we were supposed to take that before. Oh, I don't know. A2? A2. I don't have it. Well, anyway, we're supposed to return that to the box. Return A2 to the box. <laughs> okay. It doesn't exist. Uh, Card number one. No. No. Don't have it. Okay. <laughs> Card 40. That we have. Oh, we got a mark that we... Lose a point. Just mark it. Minus one point. Gross. Okay? Because they cheated me. 41. Never got it. Credit card. Okay. Oh, here. I'll... What was it? X3, right? That we had to... X3 and A2. So, don't know where A2 is, but we'll repeat... Okay. Get rid of that. 41, you just did. Yep. 43. No. A1? A2. A2. Forty-three was the dart. Okay, and forty-four. It it's a prickly pear, so we were able to get rid of both of those. Okay, those were things that were going to hurt us, but we were able to gotcha. overcome. Them. Uh, take adventure card X five and read it out loud. Okay. It explains how to begin chapter three and when you're ready for that next part of the adventure. Okay, so it seems like getting those things that we got rid of were the negative point things. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Saving the game and starting chapter three. Congratulations, you have concluded chapter two. To save the game, make note of blah, 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 which we're not gonna be doing, we're playing on. Use the question marks as memory aids as well. You retain all your adventure cards, except those with the exclamation point. Which, which we did. If you pause the game, lay out the location cards as shown on the photo or in your notes. Take adventure okay. card A3 and read it out loud. Okay. Wait. Where are the A cards? I have no A's. You don't have any A's? Did we miss place some cards? No. A one. Chapter, Chapter one. one. What is happening? G one, G two, F one. Where did A one? A three. A two. Where were those? I'm blind. 
Yeah. You don't have to agree with me. Chapter three. Oh, these are these are number cards. And here's the rest of the letter cards. There. Okay. Uh you almost have him. He should be trapped here. So track down Thomas Webb, catch him, and set the hostages free. Now take adventure card X6 and read it out loud. Well, hopefully I can find X6. What is No, here. Bring light to the darkness. Okay. You I turn on your flashlight mm -hmm. and walk through the door. Return a battery token. Important, if you run out of battery tokens but still want to illuminate something with the flashlight, from now on and throughout Chapter 3, you can. To do this, return any adventure card with a star on it to the box. For each card you deposit, you will get one battery token from the supply. Oh. All right, so we have some things. Yeah. Are you we're gonna, ready? We're going to light this brochure on fire <laughs> and this newspaper. <laughs> All the all the flammable things. It is nice. all the giraffe. We can't light the giraffe on fire. Nice. All right, you can take location card L now. Place it face up above location card K. Set your characters on K L and read Oof. L. Things just turn red. This Ugh. is creepy. Ugh. I had to take my glasses off. All right, L. Boop 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 Sorry, it's probably not a good jingle to sing as we're going to our deaths. You have a nervous tick when you Yeah. I sing jolly tunes when I'm nervous. All right. In the beam of your flashlight emerges an elaborately crafted checkerboard patterned marble floor. Four two one. Across from it, a formerly red velvet runner, 423, leads through the room to the dark wooden door, 424, at the other end of the hall. This place must once have been awfully regal before it fell prey to the indifference of the city's residents. The tall candelabra on the edge of the carpet, 422, and the formerly majestic chandelier, now dangling askew from the ceiling, must once have bathed the entry area in warm, pleasant glows. Mm. Red silken ropes, which would have guided the way and kept order, now lie in a confused jumble across the floor, still connected by their gilt stanchion posts. In the middle of the loops of rope begin the chandelier, oh, beneath the chandelier lies a shiny penny, just waiting to be picked up. It's a trap. Someone must have removed the grid of ventilation shaft because the cover lies unscrewed on the floor to reveal a dark passage for two six. Ugh. Gross. Okay. Where are you thinking? Where are you thinking to I'm go? Gonna, I'm gonna go to the candelabra. Okay. Four two two, please. White candles, all oddly undisturbed, are mounted in each of the holders. The wicks are dry, so they can still be lit perfectly. Take adventure card 47. All right. Got a candle. Do you want to light it? And you have a lighter. Do you want to light it or no? I don't know. Do you think it's time? No, probably not. Because we have our flashlight on. Hmm. That's a good question, though. Do you want to try it or not yet? Let's go for it. Okay. 47, 37 or 37, 47? Yeah, I think it's the small number first. Oh, right. 37, 47. You turn the wheel of the lighter several times, and after a few attempts, the wick finally lights. 
Now you have a neat little light source that may save you from having to use the flashlight. Excellent. Return adventure cards 37 and 47 to the box and take adventure card 54. Nice. Love. Good job. All right. Putting our stuff together. 54? Correct. We have a burning candle. Burn a nighting. All right. Seems good to have fire in this place. I'm going to go check the penny. No, I'm not. <laughs> I would like to. Oh, here. I would not. I will. I want to like throw change at it. Can I throw change at it to move the penny off the floor? <laughs> Can I do that? I I don't know that that would do anything, but maybe you have something else that. I mean, you have nylon thread that you. Nylon thread's not very. So okay, what do you want to do? You want to throw change at it? I'm gonna go throw change at it. 52425. Right? Okay. 425 was the penny. I think. Sure. Okay. 52. No. There's nothing you can do with the, that change. Okay. Okay. Um then I'm gonna check out the stanchions. I guess at some point we come back over to that stand and get some chips or whatever. Oh, right. Right. All right. Stanchions? Yeah. Uh, what? 421. Do you want to read? 421 was the checkerboard floor. Oh. Sure. I'll read that. Okay. Despite the gloomy atmosphere and cold draft blowing through every crack, the black and white marble floor lends the foyer an elegant splendor. This theater used to be the jewel in the city's crown, and even today, the luxury of bygone days can still be seen. On a more thorough inspection, however, you discover scratches and evidence of animals that took refuge here. All of a sudden, among all the filth, you notice something that you had initially completely overlooked. The gleam of a small silver metal ball lying right next to the runner catches your eye. When you pick it up, you hear a lovely ringing from inside it, which also catches the attention of something else. Mm -mm. Rustling, crackling, the echoing sound of scurrying feet coming from somewhere hard to pin down. Uh-oh. Take adventure card 55. Did I waken the rats? Scurry. Well, maybe there's a cat collar bell. Mmm. And the rats are like, oh no, the cat's back. It's a little bell. It does look like one from a cat collar. Oh, oh no. no. Oh no. A little bell be With a nylon thread? Eventually. Make a little cat toy? Sure. Or a trap. It's see a if trap. See coming behind us. Yeah. Do you want to add those two together and see if they okay. make something? Okay. 4855. Okay. With a firm knot. You tie the string to the metal ring of the bell and hold up your new toy. Now, every draft of air will trigger a bright, clear ringing sound as the bell rocks gently to the breeze. Return cards 48 and 55 to the box. Take adventure card 77. Nice. We have a little ghost detector <laughs> now. Is something following us? I always feel like somebody watching me. Bell on a string. All right. Okay. Where are you going now? Um. I always feel like somebody watching me. I don't remember what 423 was. Piles of something? Let's go there. 423. We'll check the piles. Okay. Over time, the runner, which begins a few feet behind the entrance and leads to the other end of the hall, has taken on a dirty red color. With each step, it ex ex exhales a little Ooh. cloud of dust. Oof. After a few steps, there is such a concentration of particles in the air that you can barely suppress a sneeze. Achoo! You rub the tip of your nose, blinking several times, and gaze at the carpet in consternation. Between your own footprints and another pair of shoes has left its tracks behind. Oh. Are those the mark of something or someone being dragged? Oh. Are you Rachel? Are you Marcus? Are you Simon? Are you April? 
I am Simon. Okay, read 733. What do I notice? The type of shoe that left this print behind is familiar to you. You have several pairs of the same kind on your own shelf. You have often cleaned the dirt off of the bottoms, so it is a man's shoe, but you would have known that anyway. Because I'm really smart. Okay, so we know one of the hostages is Gus it? killed them. <laughs> He's a murderer. He's the traitor. <laughs> He's been looking. He's been looking this whole time for Just because I collect men's shoes doesn't mean that I murdered the people that were in them. <laughs> uh, all right. Jess is carrying around a bell on a string. I mean, that's weird. <laughs> okay, you check these candles. I'm going to check over here. 424, please. It's the same shoe. <laughs> Maybe he I was am, here before. I was dragged through in another life. On the upper half of the dark rosewood doors, there are two golden birds flanked by swirls of vines. Mm. You turn one of the golden knobs, but it's locked. Well, okay. In that case, let's take a closer look at the locking mechanism. You probe the frame inch by inch and finally find three locations hardly bigger than a fingernail that you are able to push deeper into the wood. Next to each push button, there are notches scratched into the wood with a sharp object. There is one mark next to the bird's beak, two cuts next to the wing, and three notches next to the talon. Presumably, if these buttons are pushed in the right order, the door should open. Huh. Would you simply try would you like to simply try your luck? If so, then read this. No. Otherwise, read this. No. We don't have any clues. Do you have anything with not on the the windows outside? Uh huh. I remember seeing those, but I don't. That's just windows, huh? Yeah, there's nothing with birds. There's two notches there, double double twos. What are you seeing? On three, two, three. Two notches. Or like long, like, oh, those are door windows, huh? Yeah. Okay. Well, what else has... Player being the murderer. Yes, David is a murderer. In the game. I'm never the traitor. Uh-huh. I'm always a good guy. Nobody ever believes me. I don't know. Do we do something like on the with a pencil? Uh oh, do you want to do? Do you want to do your fine brush and billiard chalk? Yeah, maybe we could see which one has fingerprints on it. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, okay, so one four four two. One four four two. Gonna make a fingerprint kit, y'all. Cause we're not in forensics, so that's not how they really do this. Or maybe, or maybe they do. Fourteen forty two. Mm hmm. Columbus sailed it. This really might work. You scrape off a little chalk on with your fingernail and carefully dab your brush in the powder and then on the back of your hand. The blue dust clings to even the slightest traces of fat or sweat. Definitely usable, you decide. Return cards 14 and 42 to the box and take 71. Ooh. We got a fingerprint kit. Dun 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 Fingerprint kit. Yes. And it lights on fire. That's going to be my my mark for everything we find. <laughs> oh, this is flammable. Excellent. All right. So now I put it 71424. All right. That seems like a long shot, but we'll see. Dustin for prints. 71. No. Okay. But do you want to build a snowman? No. Uh, do you want to simply try your luck? No. no. Otherwise, 786. Okay. Okay. So let's read 786. Okay. 
The way the day has gone so far, it would probably be smarter not to test your luck too much. So yes. you decide to start by puzzling over the riddle before just fiddling around randomly with the knobs. Yes. Wise decision. Take adventure card 83. Okay. Fiddling with some knobs. The bird riddle. This is a picture of the bird. Do you think you've solved the riddle? If so, 333 three, three, and then XXX, where you replace the X's with your combination composed of the numbers 1, 2, and 3. Oh. So we need to press all pieces, but in the right order. order. How do we know the order? Mm -hmm. So there's beak. Talons. Talons and tail feathers? Or no, 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 no. It was... Talon was the third one. Beak was the second one. And I think it was was the head the first one? Or wings. Beak, wings, talons. talons. Huh. Beak, wings, talons. What would... Us that I don't know. We'll have to just keep looking at other stuff. All right. Uh, you gonna pull the penny? I'll go pull the penny. <laughs> I'll fall into the trap. <laughs> Fine. If I lose my fingerprint kit because of this. Would you like to take the penny? Yes. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. You are the murderer. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. Um, the way the ropes are lying there on the ground arouses your suspicions. To be on the safe side, you walk around the loop, pull back the rope, and use the sole of your shoe to feel around the area of the shiny coin. Pressure plates, cable pulls, you're ready for anything. No traps. Phew. So it really just was a penny that someone happened to lose. Take adventure card 57. Yeah. See, Sliver said it was funny if you're the murderer. You don't know I'm not. Oh, lucky penny. Oh, what does it say? Free action. If an entry says that you incur an injury, you can use a lucky penny to prevent it. Huh. The remaining effects of the entry remain valid, however, then return this card to the box. Important, if you are Simon, hold on to this card under your character card and don't pull it out until the end of the game. Oh! If you do this, this card can no longer be used for anything. Ooh, savesies! Interesting. I am Simon. Okay, so you went over here to the penny. How are we going to open this door? Uh, what else have we have not seen? 426? Did we go to 426? We did not. Right away, the shaft forks in two, and no matter which path you look along, all you see is blackness. Would you like to shine a flashlight? I would like to use the flashlight. Or do you want the burning candle? Since I have the flashlight, Down do you the want the burning candle? Down the creepy hallway. Give me the burning candle. Thank you very much. Why do I feel like I have more stuff than you? It's not a feeling. It's reality. <laughs> you have like four, four things. Dirt. And I'm like with my Mary Poppins bag of police equipment. A lot of it trash. A lot of trash. <laughs> You have a lot of trash. Oh, uh, okay. So, burning candle. Four two six five four four two six. Please. Okay. The ventilation shaft, or the ventilation through this shaft, is strong. You only need to get near it for the flame to burn out. Oh no! If you want to see inside, you'll need a different light. Crap! All right, we're gonna flash All right, flashlight it up. Flash it. Dang it. Sorry. 02426. Could we use one of your batteries? Probably. Well, we'll see. As you shine your flashlight inside, you catch a glimpse of a shadow on the wall before it disappears around the bend. 
He holds still, waiting patiently, lower the light a little, and watch as the shadow reappears and finally comes closer. You suspiciously examine the silhouette creeping towards you on all fours and are about to retreat when a friendly meow echoes off the metal walls. Meow. You hear again as the white head of a cat peeps around the corner. Kitten! The cat is the murderer! <laughs> Got the taste for blood! <laughs> and mannequin hands! <laughs> That's creepy. Her yellow eyes reflect the light and you can see her staring back at you. She takes a few cautious steps towards you, pulling back at the slightest movement, and lets out another soft meow as she bats the air playfully with her black booted paws. She arches her back and makes a little jump before pouncing on something. Uh -uh. That looks like a wadded up piece of paper. Over and over, she makes little feints as she knocks her toy from left to right. But when you try to call her over to you, she retreats from the, with the paper. She doesn't yet trust you quite that much. Place one battery token back in the box. Can I dangle the string? Let's try it. 77426? Yeah. Here, kitten. 77. Four. You do indeed find the piece of paper in the air duct. It's completely out of your reach at the end of the shaft, though, and ah. Little Miss Velvet Paws is nowhere in sight. No! You extend the bell into the darkness and ring it. The metallic sound reverberates back and forth between the walls and gets carried deeper into the room as a fading echo. You hear the familiar jaunty step draw closer and closer. The white cat with the black paws darts along the conduit until you come into her field of view. Then she makes an abrupt halt. She tilts her head and studies you curiously until she sees the bell hanging from the string in your hands. Uh -huh. She seems almost embarrassed as she bats playfully at the ball of paper in front of her paws without, however, taking her eyes off the bell for a moment. You finally have her attention. As if you were casting a fishing rod, you toss the toy out towards your new friend and do your best to tempt her with its delicate jingling. After an initial show of reserve, she starts to come closer while batting the wadded up note in your direction. Yes. Finally throwing caution to the wind, she bounces cheerfully towards you. Your bell is jumping back and forth between her paws like a ping pong ball. The cat finally takes pity on you and bats you the wad of paper. Thanks for the trade, you say as you take the note and leave her with her new toy. Return adventure card 77 to the box. Take adventure card L1 and place it face up on top of location card L. Then take adventure card 79. Ooh, we have a new number for that dark entrance. Okay, and you get 79. A poem. Ah, what do we got? The poem, everybody. The Song of the Birds. August Heinrich Hoffmann von Wallersleben. Oh, I love his stuff. We birds are quite a happy tribe. We fly, we hop, we sing. Our goodness one can scarce describe. It's such a glorious thing. Well, I think that solves a riddle. I think that solves a riddle. But do we go down the scary dark conduit or do we go through the door? I would like to go through the door and not the scary dark. <laughs> okay. What do you want to do? I'll go through. I got a flashlight. The scary dark conduit? Well, let's at least read what it says. So 427 for me. It's going to be like, are you Simon? You're the murderer. Stop. <laughs> Take your cat and go. <laughs> 427. Yeah. From the shaft, you hear the cat pawing around, following by the ringing of the bell, and then a wild hopping sound until the game starts over again from the beginning. Curious, you risk taking a look. You picked just the wrong time, though. The very moment you stick your head into the shaft, a jaunty paw digs several claw marks into your cheek. Ah. You pull back in shock, as does the kitty. But while you are rubbing your scratches, you hear the sound of the bell coming from the shaft again. Take an injury. No. Okay. Just she one. knew it wasn't me. That's why. She was like, who's this scary guy? It's the murderer. Slash. That's only seven. That's okay. what she did. She slashed your face. Face up. She slashed your face up. 
So is that everything there? I We've got to do our riddle. Okay, so the riddle said... So three, 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 and then the combination of one, two, three. Yeah, did we remember? I didn't remember wh which one was what. So it's here on the picture. Beak is one, wings are two, talons are three. Oh, okay. So it says, we fly, we hop, we sing. Fly is two. Okay. Hop is three. Sing is one. So three, 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 two, three, one. Hey, Deadpan. Welcome in. Hi, Deadpan. Happy Monday. Three, Hope three, your week has started off okay, as best it can. Sometimes the best is just okay. Three, three, three. Sometimes it's real good. What did you say? Uh, two, three, one. Three, 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 two, three, one. You wearily enter the sequence. First he flies, then he hops, and then he sings. Wings, feet, beak. Yeah. At first, nothing happens. Damn it. You are actually counting on a reaction like the door flying open or setting off a trap. But this does seem strange. You I keep... want Ed McMahon giving me a big check for $5,000 <laughs> for the rest of my life. You then hear a lock unlatch. It worked. Return card, adventure card 79 and 83. Then Solved take it. location card M, placing it face down to the right of location card L. Okay. We're going to go above. because From now on, you can go there whenever you like. If you go there for the first time, reveal card M and read card M. Okay. okay. All right. Into M. Here we go. Revealed. <clears throat> okay. You enter the hall and find yourself in the upper tiers. From here, you get a good view onto the stage and to the rest of the room. One of the lightning bridges has torn lighting, lightning, sorry, lighting with lights, bridges, has torn loose from the ceiling and has buried the two front rows of seats under its weight, 521. Luckily, several openings in the ceiling allow a little light to enter. Back in the theater's glory days, these must have provided a pleasant ambiance for the performance. Before the theater went broke, there must have also been a film presentation here because an old projector stands with its lens dangling down to the right in front of a curtain, 522. Oh. Still, the spacious stage with its drawn curtains and remnants from the very last performance form the centerpiece. Painstakingly crafted trees, bushes, and even a tower have been shaped from plywood and on a trap door, oh, even a tower, 523, have been shaped from plywood. And on a trap door, 524, cut into the wooden planks, there lies something that must once have been part of a costume before it disintegrated into an elegant cleaning cloth. To the left, 525, and to the right, 526, of the stage, a small opening leads to spaces to which only the cast and staff would have once accessed. Hold on. What was that? A sound coming out of there. Stage left and stage right. There's a sound. Sounds coming out of stages. What's happening? What's happening? Um, I'm going to go check out this lighting rig that fell. Because there's something gold there. And I'm really curious as to what that is. You can look all you're looking for the shiny stuff. So all the background is red, but there's a yellow goldish thing in the picture. Five so. two one? Yeah. You are amazed out of all the equipment that was left behind. Spotlights and other devices whose function is unknown to you are still suspended from metal poles and lie partly intact, partly destroyed on the upholstered seats. Since nobody left the since nobody felt it was their job to clean up after the final performance, you find shattered wine glasses, serving trays, and even clothing between the seats. You pick up a rather modern looking bandana hanging across an armrest and pause. All by itself, your mind starts to make connections. 
You gaze intently in the material in your hand, turning it over and flipping it. Ooh. But you just can't remember where you've seen this before. Oh. Take adventure card 58. Interesting. An old bandana. Did you used to wear bandanas when you were murdering people? Gotta have a calling card. Mm. So we got a bandana written on the inside, mirror, mirror on the wall. I'm going to break your face. What? Wait, is that how it goes? Oh. <laughs> that sounds like something you would say like in middle school. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Butts. <laughs> so red, violets are blue. Butts. That's what Sliver said in middle school. Okay. Um. Why do I have a bandana? Mirror, mirror on the wall. I'm going to break your face. I'm going to go up here on the stage. I think it was the costume was there. Okay. Five, two, four. A square hatch in the boards piques your interest. Oh, it's the trap door. Might it be used with a lifting platform to make an actor appear in spectacular fashion on the stage or maybe disappear? In any case, upon closer inspection, you can't find any way of opening it from here. Rusty knife. Oh. From yeah. here. You want to try it? Yeah. Rusty knife. 31524. I happen to be holding a rusty knife, so not murdery at all. Uh, no. Okay. Okay. So maybe we have to get below stage to do anything Above, like that? with the lighting. The... No, I meant for the, the trap door. Oh. Get below. Push up. Okay. Where do you want to go? Um, I don't remember what was what, so I'll just creep okay. over here to the projector. I do remember that, so. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Five, two, two? Yeah. Wow. And that is quite an old treasure. The projector is still equipped with its manual crank, which can make images fit across the screen when kept in motion. As a test, you open the small lightning lighting chamber and note with disappointment that it is empty. You need some kind of light source to see if you can operate the machine. 54. 54. I thought the burning candle got burnt out. Okay. It didn't oh, no, it was just though. warning. It didn't burn out. It was just oh, saying that there was a draft. It was just flickering. There was a draft heavy enough to burn okay, out. Okay, 54. 522. Okay. Ooh, that's a lot. There's a lot here. Oh, we're going to watch a movie. <clears throat> like our forefathers did with a candle. <laughs> with a candle and a manual projector. Exactly. You break the candle in two and make it fit comfortably into the box intended for a light source. You use a little wax to fit the burning half in place in the projector and close the flap again. Now comes the moment of truth. With smooth, even movements, you turn the crank and are astonished to see that the projector works and that a film has already been loaded into it. Fortunately, it is pretty dark in this corner, so the flickering flame of the candle is just enough to project an image. You stare, transfixed at the rippling curtain, which is now illuminated by a weak patch of light. As you see the first images, the hairs rise up on your back. Ooh. Function and treatment options of psychotic disorders by the lobotomy procedure of Freeman and Watts. Dr. Friedrich Berquist, practicing physician, and St. Mary's Mental Asylum. Apparently, this has to do with some sort of document. Uh, apparently, this has to do with a sort of documentation recorded by the personnel of the asylum itself. There is no sound, but based on your initial impression, you are assuming that Dr. Berquist was delivering a presentation about his work and and his clinic. Carefully groomed and attired in fine clothing, he sits behind his desk with an earnest expression on his face and silently moves his lips. It suddenly then cuts away. Images of a boy, maybe 18 years old, tall and with an angry expression on his face, firmly bound by his arms and his legs to a treatment chair. He screams, not in pain, but in rage. 
His hands are turning white under the pressure of the belts that have been wrapped too tightly around his joints. Next to him, smiling calmly, are a nurse and Dr. Burquist, who, hands protected by rubber gloves, sends a small pick and hammer to the camera, oh, presents a small pick and hammer to the camera, and then commences to use them. Ooh. The remaining scenes are enough to freeze blood in your veins. Yeah. When everything is finally over, Dr. Burquist smiles again to the camera, but now his rubber gloves are smeared with blood. The nurse, on the other hand, seems to have lost her composure. With a blood-drained face, she steps out of the picture to permit an unobstructed view of the boy, who now sits motionless, gazing into the distance with a vacant expression. Still in shock, you stop cranking the handle, removing the roll of film, and ponder for a moment whether or not you should simply burn it. Then, however, you blow out the candle and put the recording in your pocket. Return Adventure Card 54 to the box and take Adventure Card 59. Oh, goodness. Oof. Did we just witness a lobotomy? Yep, we did. That is brutal. Ugh. Gross. We got a clue. The film reel. Going into the briefcase. Bam. You can't burn it. Okay. <laughs> okay. I know it's got Prompt. two stars. It's two stars. Gosh, that was, that was bad. Okay. Uh, five, two, three. Maybe that's where the costume was. Five, two, three. Okay. Impressive. All the passion and creativity that goes into creating such convincing stage sets from the simplest materials. Give a set designer some paper mache and paint and he can make, well, you know what you see here. Mm -hmm. Are you Rachel? Marcus? I'm April. April. 433. Three. That's where the costume was. Okay. True to Shakespeare's design, a high tower was reconstructed for the final performance. A small foldaway ladder leads up to the balcony from which the beautiful Juliet proclaimed her love for her Romeo. You reach the top and cast a glance through the window onto the stage. In your mind's eye, the spectators gaze up at you in rapt attention. O oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore out thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name, or if thou wilt not, be but sworn my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. You cry theatrically from your lofty position and imagine that you can hear the murmur of the crowd. But that's enough of this silliness. You are, cli you are already climbing down the rungs again when you notice a small bottle. Mm. You can see a hand-drawn skull and crossbones on it, and the liquid itself is clear. Uh-oh. Take adventure card 60. Got some poison. Poison. You like to collect things. This girl is poison. Ooh, Juliet's poison. The skull and crossbones look a little frightening at first, but who uses actual poison for a prop? Would you like to taste the liquid in the bottle? Important, if you are Rachel or April, try it no matter what. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> You have a problem with liquids and bottles. You're like, I need to see. I what this need is. to see what this is. Six, six, six. And the number of the to it's read is death. Six, six, six. Death. So oh God. You take a mighty swing from the bottle, and before you know it, it's almost empty. Oh. God. Only then does the realization hit you. What's wrong with these theater people? <laughs> you would almost prefer to drink actual poison. Instead, you feel the sharpness of absinthe running down your throat. Oh, okay. Foul stuff. Your face contorts in disgust, and you throw the bottle to the floor. Suddenly, your perception blurs. Oh, no. How can this crap affect you so quickly? <laughs> Could it have been spiked with something? Oh, no. Take one injury. No. Ah, oh, jeeps. Return adventure card 60 to the box. Okay. And take adventure card 61. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Why did you drink it? I don't know. It was just so shiny. Oh, 
Drunk! I'm now drunk from my swig of absinthe. <laughs> you should have known better. The absinthe really fogged your brain and you can no longer think clearly. While a loss of hand-eye coordination may be humorous to those standing around you, it might not go well for you if things get dicey. It cannot be exchanged. Uh, I can't take drunk from you. What do you think about drinking your mineral water? Try yeah. To, like, Clear myself out. A little bit. 6182. I also have some brandy, too. So I'm like, should I just <laughs> cocktail? Just swirl it all in my... Oh, gosh. What am I doing? 6182. The liter of bottle helps with the drunken dehydration. And after a while, you're able to see more or less clearly again. Return adventure cards 61 and 82 to the box. Yay! I sobered up fast. <laughs> you didn't drink anything in a bottle. Take that, absinthe. <laughs> All right. Um. Okay, what do we got? So we got... Stage right or stage left? Uh, well, I'm over here on the right. Well, I'm going. With, this is stage left, right? Correct. Okay, so I'm going stage left. Five, two, six. Yeah. All that a quick glance down the hallway tells you is that it curves towards the left at the end. You follow the corridor and come to a door that is barely cracked open. On it, a long time ago, someone painted the word props in black. But not much is left of the writing, though. Take location card O. Place it face down. That's N. This is O. Yeah, I think we could probably remove all that stuff now. Oh, yeah, probably. We're all done with that. I'm not going back out to the streets. Oh, okay. to there. Uh, when you want to go there for the first time, reveal a location card O. You ready? Sure. Let's go. All right. You could describe the room's contents as a well-organized chaos. Clothing racks and shelves that were repurposed for hanging shields, weapons, 722, and other utensils. Boxes holding all sorts of knickknacks, 723, used in past productions, along with simple utilitarian objects like a large cauldron, 724, an old broomstick, 725, that were thrown together in this room to await their call to the grand stage, which would never come again. Masks in all shapes and sizes, were from flamboyant to terrifying, are hanging on the wall, 421. It looks like they were prepared for pretty much anything here. Even a replica of an old Winchester revolver is dangling in its leather holster from a hat rack. 426. All right, then I'm going to go to the left. Okay. Or to the right. Split the party. According to the sign, this is the changing room for the actors. Unfortunately, it's locked. Bust it open with my rusty knife. I'm gonna try a knife on the door? Yep. Knife on the door, knife on the door. Gonna bust it open with the knife on the door. 31525. All you're gonna do is scratch the door. Fine. Alright, I'll come join you, I guess. Alright. Alright. Um, where's the revolver? Which one was the revolver? 726. I feel like I need. we need to prepare ourselves, even if it's fake. Okay. Even though you're sure it's just a replica, you're cautious as you lift the revolver from its stand and put it, pull it from the holster. While it may be a copy, what you hold in your hands is a wonderful piece of handiwork. Mm. A smoothly polished grip made of walnut wood, painstakingly cast nickel, and even the embossed W of the brand. Just to be safe, you check the magazine. Empty. Mm -hmm. You aren't sure whether you would have preferred to find something else. Take adventure card 69. I got a gun. The toy revolver. Okay. I mean, I'm just, I'm like a crow. I'm pretty much just collecting all the shiny stuff. 
All right, where do you want to go? Um, I don't, I don't know why, but I want to check out these masks. Okay. Seven, two, one, please. Okay. Reproductions of Venetian carnival masks, African shamanic masks, Medusa with snakes wriggling out in all directions from her head. Somehow, your hunt for the perpetrator reminds you of that old Greek myth. The one in which Perseus set out with his mirrored shield so that he would not have to look directly at the gruesome visage of the monster. So he could be, would not be turned into stone. In this labyrinth with its dark corners, dangerous traps, and your own kind of monster, wouldn't it be handy to have something that would let you peer around corners instead of just running into the arms of your enemy? That's it. So we need to find a mirror. <laughs> it's kind of leading that way. Mm. I was wondering if we did find a mirror, is this telling me to like wrap the bandana around my head and punch it? Oh. Mirror, mirror on the wall. I'm going to break your face. Right. Yeah. So that would be cool if we did find a mirror because we could break it and then have a. Yeah. Uh, cauldron time. Okay. I call it little spy gear. Yeah. What's it? Seven two four. Your eyes widen in disbelief as you peer into the pot. Ooh. The acrid odor hanging over the round-bellied vessel makes you gag. Blech. Someone has dumped can after can of cat food into it. Oh, A cutie. large plastic scoop is stuck into the middle of the slop whose crusty surface makes a nauseating sucking sound as you pull the utensil out. Aww. Disgusted, you let it sink back in. In the process, you almost overlook the small brown key that the animal lover seems to have dropped inside by mistake. Yuck. Take adventure card 32. Is that the key for the other side? Maybe. Covered in cat food. C cat food? Crusty cat food. Poor kitty. She shouldn't be eating crappy cat food. Small, filthy key. <laughs> okay. Everything in this whole place is filthy. Yep. Um, Where are you okay. going? I'm going to check out the swords and shields. Okay. 722. 722. You realize in surprise that the fencing foil has an actual steel blade even if it's completely dulled. As an improvised thrusting weapon, though, it would probably do. Yes. It amazes you how light the blade and handle are. This whole thing cannot weigh more than a pound. That's what a murderer would say. This is so light. Take adventure card 66. Yes. Let's get some weapons. Murderizings. Dull fencing coil. Okay. Uh, seven, two, five. Broomstick time? Hey, I went to the cauldron. Witching hour. <laughs> Just an old broom after all. Even in such a rich trove of costumes, there's bound to be something boring once in a while. You nudge it. Nope. It won't fly away. It's just a broom. Just a broom. Boo. Do you want to go see the last thing then? What was it? Seven, two, three? Yeah. Okay. In the middle of the scenery tableaus, theater props, and other junk, this one wooden crate seems comparatively out of place. Hmm. Instead of being suited to the needs of actors and stage sets, its contents simply seem to have some kind of sentimental value. Hmm. Digging with both arms deep into the wood box, you push aside all sorts of trinkets that seem meaningless at first glance. The deeper you dig, however, and the more objects you grab, the clearer an image you get of all of the items and their interrelationships. Hmm. With each object that you pull out, an old pair of size 10 shoes, a blanket with its wool singed in places, tarnished silver jewelry, it becomes clearer who these things belong to. Then you find a round blue button that you can't take your eyes off of. <gasps> take adventure cards 67 and 68. It's for the giraffe. Wasn't he missing an eye? He is missing an eye, but was it a button? I don't know. I thought it was a button eye. Let's see. 67. 67 is a wooden button. 
And 68 is some scorched jewelry. It's a clue. Going into the briefcase. All right. I want to put the, the stuffy back together. Okay. 2667. All right. right. 2667? Mm -hmm. Okay. You managed to attach the blue wooden eye to its intended place. Yay! And you examine your work with satisfaction. A little wobbly, but better than before. Yay! Return adventure cards 26 and 67 to the box. Take adventure card 76. You're not gonna burn him alive. 76. Oh, he's so cute now. Oh, he's repaired. Excellent. Yay. Maybe if we show him to Thomas, it'll melt his heart and he will let the people go. And then we'll stab him in the face. With a rusty knife With and a dull fencing coil. With a rusty knife and a dull fencing coil and a toy revolver. All right. All right well, so we did all that. So do you think this key goes to the other side? Maybe. Okay. I don't know if there's anything else to do in here. Let's go over there. 32525. Touching it only with your fingertips, you take the key and insert it into the lock. It fits. Yay! You're finally rid of the disgusting thing. The door opens onto a dark hallway. Unfortunately, not even a tiny beam of light is getting in. Return adventure card 32 to the box. Okay. Do you all want to enter the room together with the flashlight turned on? If so, place one battery token back in the box and then go to 619. Seems like a good thing. Yeah. Now they're going to be like, you should have kept it off. Stab, stab. Death, death. Place your character figures next to location 525, then keep reading. You switch on the flashlight. The beams of light blitz nervously along the passage, and just as you're about to enter the room, something occurs to you. Three of the wooden strips in front of you look like they've been manipulated. Cautiously, you test the su suspicious boards and determine that your gut instinct was right. With just the slightest pressure, one of the laths starts to give way, revealing a deep hole beneath. That web is such a weasel. Highly alarmed, you climb over the sawed up boards and only after testing carefully for more traps, turn your attention to trying to figure out what else might be found here. Hmm. Just at that moment, the changing room is lit up with a harsh artificial light. The speaker pops, and you hear the jarring, now familiar voice of Webb echoing through all the rooms. I prepare so many gifts for you, but you always reject them. With that, everything suddenly goes dark again, and you stumble blindly back out of the room. Take location card N and place it face down above location card M. From now on, you can enter location card N whenever you like. When you go there for the first time, reveal location card. Okay, let's just do it. There's nowhere else to go. Ooh. In, in, in. It takes a while for your eyes to adjust to the poor lighting. Meanwhile, your other senses are working overtime. You could swear that there was someone else here not too long ago. The presence of a stranger still hangs in the air, mm. even if he is now gone. There are mirrors along the entire length of the room, 621, framed by numerous light bulbs that must have provided plenty of light. On the cosmetic counter, there are still the remains of theater makeup, 622, and costumes laid out for trying on, 623. Here, too, a thick layer of dust testifies to the fact that the dressing room hasn't been used in ages. As your eyes gradually adapt, you discover that someone was tampered was tampering with one of the seats recently. You frantically look around, and all at once, a silhouette of a shape emerges on the wall. Just as you are bracing yourself for a confrontation with Thomas Webb, you realize that the shadow is coming from a mannequin, 624. Relieved, you relax your defenses again, but realize how easily you could have fallen into another one of his traps. <sighs>
Creep, creep, creep. Okay, where do you want to go now? I open I, the door. I'm going to go to the mirror, and I'm potentially going to punch the mirror. Okay. Six what? Six, two, one, please. Six, two, one, please. Standing in the middle of the room, you almost feel like you're in a hall of mirrors. The poor light lighting intensifies this feeling. You can only dimly perceive your own grimace in the reflection. You look tense and exhausted with dark circles under your eyes. The worry lies in your forehead. The worry lines in your forehead look as though they were chiseled there. The three hours that Webb granted you have long since passed. But in the view of the attempt to capture you, the whole thing was probably an artificial deadline anyway. When all this is over, you're going to treat yourself to a long, nice, restful sleep. Mm, that does sound good. All right, 58621. Punch. 58. You wrap the cloth around your bald fist several times. Your mirrored image watches you as if it wanted to say, just be careful. Before you have time to think too much about whether this is a good idea or not, you strike. With a loud clatter, the mirror bursts into pieces in the force of your blow. You briefly shake out your fist. Splinters of glass fall from the cloth, but you are mostly unharmed. The dressing table and floor, on the other hand, are covered with glass shards which crunch like newly fallen snow under your shoes. A larger shard is barely hanging on to the mirror frame. You reach over and carefully wrap the shard, which just happens to fit precisely in your hand inside the piece of cloth. Take one injury. No! Return 50 car 58 to the box and take adventure card 64. All right, I have eight injuries. Now you got to read a thing. Uh, what'd you say, 64? Yep. Yeah, uh, 511, please. Okay. Okie doke. Why are so many memories hard to get rid of? Especially the painful ones. Yes, a thousand times yes! She jumps into your arms and you are almost afraid of dropping her as your nerves have left you a bit lightheaded. Really? She isn't the only one who laughs out loud at your question. The crowd of people gathered in the pavilion join in as well. Applause erupts from the crowd as you gaze into the face of the woman you love without limit. The moment could hardly be more than perfect. Now that you have a permanent position with the GCPD, this was just the right time to ask Vanessa to be your wife. Now you can buy a house, have children, get a dog, all of the things that the two of you have often talked about. Her bright, almost amber-colored eyes are sparkling at you, overjoyed. You pull her tight to yourself. So many faces of people that you have never seen before in your life smile at you and celebrate with you. When you asked her, they just happened to be here in the pavilion where you had your first date. And now, here they are, cheering you on as if they were members of your own family. Only one of them seems out of place. While all the others clap along, hooting and hollering to congratulate you, he just stands there alone in the crowd with his hands in his pockets, staring. His hood is drawn low, its dark shadow covering his entire face. And we should invite my aunt on my mother's side? Her voice then cuts through. Just then, you realize that your head was in a completely different place at that moment, when all of your thoughts were supposed to be devoted onto your beloved. Your police instincts must be telling you that something about this guy in the hood, but when you look back towards the crowd, he is gone. Hmm. Is Thomas there at my proposal? Uh-uh. I don't know. Okay. Uh, creepy thing. So you were up here breaking glass. Yeah. I'm going to look at the mannequin. Okay. Is that 624? Mm-hmm. On close inspection, it's just the torso of a doll on a long stand where the legs would be if it were a person. It is scantily clad as if to cover the figure's shame. A spider has spun an artistic web from the stand to the hips. You clap the doll familiarly on the, familiarly on the shoulder as if she were an old friend. 
Distracted by this, you don't notice the figure standing in the door and uh -huh. you hear hasty steps hurrying away down the hall. Crap. Too late. You turn around just in time to see a shadow disappearing around the next corner. Place adventure card N1 face up on location card N. Also place adventure card O1 face down on location card O. Oh, over here. O1. Face down on O. Okay. The next time you go to O or perform an action there, turn over O1 and place it on location card O. Okay. Oh, so now we have 625? Yep. All right. Well, I'll see what 625 is. Okay. A fine coating of undisturbed dust has settled on the surface and extends across the entire length of the table like new snow on a cold winter's night. Lost in thought, you move back you think back to more innocent days when something as simple as making a snowman could bring you such pleasures. Then your gaze catches on something out of place. There is a spot where the dust has been wiped away. In its place, you can make out several fingerprints. Webb's hand, you're sure of it. Apparently, he feels so at home here, he is getting careless. The trail is still fresh. If only you can preserve it, the GCPD might find it very helpful. Fingerprint kit! Fingerprint kit! 71625. Fingerprint kit. That should be a rock song. Uh, 71625. Okay. Okay. Proud of your powers of deduction, you lower the soft brush into the chalk dust and then carefully dab at the fingerprint of the fingertip of the print. The fine ridges of the skin stand out from the background in the chalk. You improvise by removing the strip of tape that was used to seal your invitation, applying it to the print, and finally attaching it gently to the back of the envelope. Return card adventure card 71 to the box. And then take adventure card 65. Right. Good job. You dusted for prints. That's a very cop thing to do. We have a clue. Dun, 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 dun. Going in the briefcase. Man, we got, look at, we got all this evidence. All this evidence. We got to catch this guy. We're going to nail him. We got to catch this guy. All right. Okay. Six, two, three. Yeah, six, two, three. I'm going to get some more water. Do you have any water? I have some. Oh, thank you. The three dresses hanging from the rack are still in good shape. The material is high quality, heavy, and clearly more elaborately fashioned than what you saw lying on the stage. The only flaw is at the hem of one of the garments. The seam has been loosened and a scrap of fabric is literally hanging by a thread. Just then, you notice something out of the corner of your eye. A quick glance over your shoulder, however, merely reveals your own reflection in several mirrors, hmm. each one covered with several cracks. It wouldn't take much for them to fall apart into lots of pieces. Hopefully you won't be around when that happens. The shower of shards would definitely be unpleasant. Yeah, we already did that. You already busted it open. I have a thought. Yes. So, we have a foil. Uh-huh. And a mirror yes. piece. We just need something to attach said mirror piece to said foil so we can stick it around corners and see what's happening. Okay. Like fabric. Okay. Do we, ha we don't that have. Maybe we could get with the knife. Okay. So cutting the fabric. That's my thought. Okay. 31. 622. Thirty-one, six, two, no. That's a good thought. Is there anything else that we could do to cut some? What if we like do sixty-four and six, two, three? Okay. Just see if it's like, oh yeah, sixty-four. Six two three. Uh huh. No. 
Okay. All right, we still have 622 to investigate. Okay. And then it looks like we might have to go back to O. Back to O. Man of the water, sweetheart. Thank you. Six, two, two. Okay. All kinds of cosmetic products are lying spread out across the dressing table. You find typical makeup for the day, an empty powder box, false eyelashes, so long that they must have been pretty unpleasant for the wearer, but likely made quite the impression on stage. A typical theater makeup in all the colors of the rainbow, and at the edges of the table, there are also various toiletries all lined up. Are you Rachel, Marcus, Simon, April? Simon. Simon, read 848. Okie doke. You can vividly imagine the scolding from your colleagues as you pick up the utensils each one by one. You shouldn't always be pawing everything, blah, blah, blah. And how else, if I might ask, are you supposed to examine things? Hmm, is the black ink for eyebrows? You quickly shove this little brush back into the tube and set it aside. Then you survey the rest of the junk until your gaze stops at a jar of face cream. It looks pretty. Maybe you can still make use of it. Take adventure card 62. Okay. You don't know what a lot of makeup is, but you got some face cream. Heals one injury. Ooh. Then return this card to the box. You gonna use it? Why don't we heal yours? Because maybe we can keep you from revealing your okay. deep dark. Secrets. Okay. Great. All right. Guess we got to go back to O. Back to O. That was me. So you going in? Yep. Reveal O1. What does it say? Um. This is here. Okay. There's a person there now. A person there now. Oh, great. Seven two seven. Seven two oh. seven. Oh, gosh. I don't like this. <laughs> I'm going to die. The moment of the first encounter is oddly surreal. An initial burst of harsh light, and then there he stands in the semi-darkness. <sighs> Pretty unremarkable, almost completely average. But those are often the ones whose brains are the most twisted. Ugh. Still, in spite of all of the experiences and encounters of this sort, something in you strives to reconcile the image of Webb, the psychotic murderer, with this figure. The expression on his face speaks volumes. He wants you to be here. He is enjoying the show. It's his performance. He wants to tell his story. Smiling smugly, he is fiddling with something, uncertain of his next move. You keep your distance. They already asked about you, you know. Is he talking about the hostages? That must mean that they are still alive. Of course not by name. Help, help, let us out of here, and so on. But we know what they mean by that, don't we? Words can be used to say much more than just what's obvious on the surface. Uh -huh. One of the lessons that my years in the theater taught me after my release they let me sleep here, you know, if I cleaned the rooms at night. Kind of impudent, actually. Still, this is my home. His thoughts wander off. He's talking more to himself than to you. Mm. And as he does so, he keeps digging his fingers into the object in his hand. Do you want to interrupt him? Or do you want to keep listening? Mm. I feel like I want to interrupt him with the giraffe, but... Maybe I'll keep listening. Hi, Dino Corgi. Thank you for stopping and saying hi. Hope you have some good sleep. Hey, Dino Corgi. Yeah, let's keep listening. You're going to keep listening? Yeah. Let him monologue? Let him monologue. That's what villains do. Patiently and without making any movement, you listen to his words. It was her home. The unexpectedly soft expression in his face takes you aback for a moment. Mother was a good person. Too good for him. If only she had still been at the club as usual. It was only supposed to be him. 
She shouldn't have been there. He is apparently talking about his family. During his monologue, he briefly turned quiet. Now, however, almost feverishly, he is once again kneading the small object in his hand. On closer inspection, you can see that it's a small box of matches. Hmm. You know the logo. It belonged to a company owned by Webb Sr., but most of the color has faded and the packaging is crumbled. But they will pay. Everyone who was involved, the nurses and doctors, the police, everyone who abandoned me to that misery. He looks right at you, but you can tell from his gaze that his mind is far, far away. Ooh. You! His hands are shaking as his gaze sweeps to the box. You notice that a blue jacket, the same shade as the company's logo, has been thrown onto the box's contents. Its material seems soaked. As your brain finally catches on, it's too late. While you let him get out of your sight, he has lit one of the matches and simply lets it drop to the floor. Uh-oh. In an instant, flames are lighting up a path of gasoline leading right towards you. In front of you, a wall of fire rises up and spreads to the jacket and the rest of the box's contents. You are going to burn just like my father. With these words, the silhouette of Thomas Webbs disappears in black smoke, and you turn your attention to getting out of here as fast as possible. Return location card O and adventure card O to the box. Then place adventure card M1 face up on location card M. Take all of the character figures that were on O or O1 and move them to M. Okay, and while that was happening, David, we got a raid. Welcome in, Heart Board Games. Thank hey, you so much raiders. for the raid. Hi, Heart Board Games and friends. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, shout out to you all. I know he's muting, uh, so I'm going to say thank you for the raid. Oh, yes. If you've already muted, you won't hear me tell you that this is a good one. But if you haven't muted yet, it's a good one. Uh, yes, for those that are just joining, my name's Jess. I'm joined by my husband, David. We are playing the adventure game, The Gloom City File. This is part three. Uh, we are getting close to the end, so there are going to be spoilers and things. So I understand if you need to raid and run, that's totally fine. But welcome in. Glad you all are here. And I uh, hope you had fun over with uh, Jesse and the gang over at Heart Board Games. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. If you want to see how this ends, it's coming to an end quickly. Yep. Okay, uh, so we're on M, and we have a new space. Okay, 527. Let's jump in. Dang it, we let him monologue, and he got away. <laughs> okay. Webb must have left the hatch open on purpose when he ran over here. So he must be waiting for you somewhere down below. Take location card P and place it face down beneath location card M. From now on, you can go to P whenever you like. The first time, reveal location card P. Read P. Okay, we're going to read it. Yes? Yeah. We're so close. We're so close. Going under the stage. All right. You slowly climb down through the trap door. Beneath the stage is a large storage room holding all the technical necessities required to ensure that the actors and stage sets are all making proper impressions as they enter and exit. Candles illuminate the room and cast a ghostly light on the inventory. This lower stage area is crammed with way too much stuff, concealing lots of nooks and crannies, 821 and 822 okay. that could hide anything and anyone. Along with lifting platforms, lowering mechanisms, and revolving stages, there are all sorts of art materials, 823, and crates as tall as a man. Several bowls, the type using for eating breakfast cereal, are stacked on a seat of a chair, 824. A container, the kind used on cargo ships, dominates the rear portion of the room, 825. No trace of Thomas Webb, but you have the feeling that he is lying low around here somewhere. With all of its murky corners, this place seems to be made to order for the kind of perfidious game of hide-and-seek like a sneaky little rat like Tom might enjoy. <laughs> all right. All right, where do you want to check first? 
I, would, I don't know if this will be a thing, but I'm thinking I might take my fencing foil and okay. poke around in 822. Okay, 60... 66, 822? So instead of going... Uh, guns... Not a thing. Okay. What about 66, 821? Uh, not a thing. Okay. Darn, I was kind of hoping that we could, like, try to find him. Um. All right, well, I'll just check out 822. Yet another dark, dirty corner, too inconvenient for even the theater people to store anything but worn-out junk here. Ooh, did we use our last flashlight? Uh, yes, 02822. Okay. Flashlight, and we don't have a candle, remember? Yep, we used our candle. There is no light. O two a two two. Yeah, the beam of light fits f flits frantically around. Damn it! No sign of either Webb or the hostages. Well, we don't have to use a battery. Okay. All right. Where uh, would you um, like to go? Um, the crate. I think it was eight two five. have the water thank you the massive steel container must cover an area of 60 square feet in front of the door you find a few pieces of straw and the dried remains of old cat food oh. was it used for animal transport oh you feel the urge to knock on the metal but that but then have a better idea Better not to make an unnecessary noise. So you walk softly around the container and find yourself standing in front of the identifying label EWGC. EWGC. Wasn't his dad's name something? What was his dad's name? Didn't it start with an E? Oh yeah. Ernest? Ernest. Ernest Webb. Gloom City. Gloom City. Okay. What does that have to do with anything? That's it? That's all it said? Yep. Okay. All right. Um, right. I'll check out 823. Okie doke. So close. Cans of spray paint, plaster, still sealed buckets of paint. There are things in the theater personnel used to prepare sceneries for productions. Unfortunately, nothing of, of use seems to be here at the moment. Mm. Okay. Do you want to open any of them up? Take your rusty knife, open up a can of paint. <laughs> it does not sound like it. Okay. Where do you want to go? Uh, I'll go check out the bowls on the table. A24. Okay. At arm's length, you take the top bowl off the Tower of Dishes and wrinkle your nose in disgust. It's not just that it stubbornly sticks to the stuff beneath it and requires a vigorous shake in order to Ugh. free them. What is inside the bowl is even worse. Rancid cat food, dried out on the surface and swig swimming in jingly, jiggly brownish gels which has already decomposed into a meal for something very low down the food chain. Can you grab that from the cooper? <laughs> Sorry, friends. Our puppy's dog toy has taken on an extra exponential amount of volume. We're not going to do that one right now, okay, pups? Girl, Does she yeah. have another? Give her her, her moose right there. Switch to squeaks. There you go. Okay. Okay, uh, rancid cat food dried out on the surface with swimming and jingle, jiggling brownish gel already decomposing into a meal for something very low down the food chain. Fat white maggots are feasting on the chunks of old meat, romping around blissfully in paradise for vermin. They begin writhing wildly on the floor when you interrupt their mealing by dropping the bowl. The bowls underneath them are not yet infested, but stink is almost as repugnant. In accordance with Archimedes, the mass of the topmost bowl has caused the semi-liquid contents to swell over the edges. Rotting slime from collagen of meat goblets flows over a bowl marked Diana, written on it in permanent black marker. 
The other bowls are marked with names as well, although the slimy remains have rendered them completely illegible. Take card 70. So Diana... Is that the cat? Oh! Diana Clark. We found, like, a long time ago. 70? Yeah, maybe she was one of the actresses. Another clue! The bowl with Diana's name and brown... Sludge. Sludge. Gross! Okay. Um, so we have the container that we haven't opened yet, and we have 821. Brown sludge, gross. You softly place one foot before the other and press your back against the cold surface of the column that is blocking your view. Wouldn't this be the perfect hiding place for that lunatic? Your heart is pounding in your throat, but you circle around and risk a lightning fast look around the corner only to quickly pull back again. Was there something there? You're not sure. Maybe your senses are just playing tricks on you and making you think there are movements in the darkness when there really aren't. Or are there? Use the flashlight, please. Oh, the shard. Right. Shards. Peek around. Of infinity. 64, 821? Yeah. The edge of the mirror shard is pressing unpleasantly against your body. Uh-oh. Being careful not to cut through the cloth and into your own hand, you pull it out and look in the reflection. This might work. You use the mirror to find a suitable angle from which to get a view of the areas that you haven't yet been able to see. Right at the moment, there's no acute danger. You've been lucky. Then suddenly you are startled by a voice and you react with a jerk. Mm-mm. Uh -uh. For a moment, you are afraid that you have fallen into another one of his traps. But his voice seems farther away. What a splendid cat and mouse game, he calls into the room. The only problem is you don't seem to understand who the hunter is and who the hunted. Oh. He laughs. That dampens your mood a bit. You can try asking the other mice. You will be keeping them company before long, you know. Yeah, yeah, crazy nonsense from a megalomaniac. <laughs> but the sounds help you locate where he is probably hiding right now. Place a check mark on 821 and place adventure card P1 face up on top of location P. That's a check mark over here. Where are you going? P1 over here. Right. Can I read A26? Sure. Can we just like find this guy and stab him or something? I'm getting kind of annoyed. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> you dimly recognize Webb. Only the occasional glimmer of his cigarette betrays the fact that there is something more than just a stage decoration here. You have to assume that he's watching you. This little game is a lot of fun, don't you think? The relaxed tone of his voice makes you nervous. Something like that can never be good. For a second, another pull of a cigarette illuminates a small cloud of smoke that he just exhaled. At that moment, his appearance brings up distant memories of the fat caterpillar from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. It was always talking nonsense and having fits of anger when people could not understand what at all it was saying. To avoid this kind of thing, you remain silent. You still don't know where he's hiding the hostages, and you are irritating him now if you just put them in unnecessary danger. This here marks the end, yours or mine. His voice grows louder. Gaining in intensity and with understanding of his own words, his insanity creeps to the foreground again. All that matters is that everyone remembers what happens here today, the production of my life until the curtain falls. With these words, you're, you sense a movement in the darkness. Expecting yet another perfidious trap, you get ready to jump. Instead, something comes crashing down from the ceiling, landing between you and Webb, who uses this moment of distraction to disappear again into the bowels of the theater in preparation for the final act. If you can only somehow see him in the shadows, but how? The lighting here simply is abysmal. O two, using eight, our flashlight. Two, o two eight two six. 
02826. Oops. Okay, here we go. With the flashlight in your hand, you definitely will be clearly visible from anywhere in this darkness, a perfect target. Although, with a little luck, you might be able to dazzle him. The alley in front of you winds straight ahead between old pipes and a dirty wall of concrete before making a right turn. This also marks the limit of your abilities to see what's going on in this area, which is not exactly a lot. Your gut tells you that you have to be careful. On the other hand, what if the hostages are in there? Place a battery token back in the box. If you want to continue, read 944. Are you April? Read 944. Let's continue. Okay. We got to do this. We're going to get this guy. In the dim light of the candles and wandering beams of your flashlight, shadows dance across the walls and the floor. Even if the murky outlines of crates and rolls of material seem suspicious, your gaze flirts and lifts to the right, Ugh. flits left and right, just as you are trying to keep everything inside your field of vision. All the more reason to blame yourself when you suddenly feel something pressing against the materials of your shoes. Damn, you should have known. As fast as your reactions will allow you, you try to throw yourself to the sides, but the trap has already been snapped shut. A metal spool unrolls. Out of the corner of your eye, you see a lever. As you glance upward, you catch sight of a massive sandbag swinging towards you on a thick rope. This hits you in the back with a heavy crash. The blow takes out your breath and knocks you to your knees. You give yourself a moment to recover from the shock before standing up and looking around. Nothing. No trace or of web or of the hostages. Okay, great. All of this for nothing. Take two injuries and place adventure card P2 on, on top of adventure card P. <laughs> okay. All right. Place all character figures on P and then continue reading. With open arms, Webb stands before the shipping container. Two floor lamps cast their light from behind, and you see him clearly for the first time. Oh, he looks like a psychopath. Not hidden in the shadows or a photograph from his, oh, not hidden in the shadows or in a photograph from his childhood. Thomas Webb is in all theatrical self-importance. Tom, who had crafted these plans and has committed all of these atrocities, just to draw your attention and to thank, and to thank him, just to draw your attention to him and to make you think of his story. It makes you sick thinking about it. His skin is so pale that you can almost shine a light through it if you aimed your flashlight in his direction. The gaunt face with its dark red burned scar combining with his ecstatic expression creates an incongruous image of diffused lighting. So here we are at last, all of us together for the grand fin. An abrupt hammering on sheet metal disrupts his well-practiced speech. In a moment, his face was darkened. The noise was coming from inside the shipping container. Hello? H hello? Is someone there? Help us! This is crazy! Furiously, he turns around, lifting both fists and bringing them crashing down upon the metal door. Shut up, damn it! Cha chaotic tumult is inside. Bodies crawling across the floor and gathering in the rear, choking sobs. He turns your back. He turns back to face you again swinging between mania and rage this is supposed to be his moment he will not tolerate interruptions so where were we then an abrupt change from a hot temper to condensate cond condescension ah yes after a brief pausing for thought he picks up the thread back again in any case, I'm pleased you are here. All the effort, all the work that I devoted to sending a message to the world. <laughs> to show the world what happens when people are treated the way they treated me. He sobs theatrically. Uncomfortable truths are never easy to hear. Sometimes you need a catalyst. 
a motivator to make people listen to you. Almost affectionately, he caresses the container behind him. And sometimes the best motivator is the death of high-valued members of society. Once again, shocking cries ring out from within the box. Shut up, I said. And again, his face is overcome with blind fury. He turns away, kicking against the metal like a toddler, and screams curse from the container. He turns his back towards you, and you sense your opportunity to step closer to him. But as almost as if he had eyes in the back of his head, he interrupts you. Ah, uh ah, -uh, not like that, my dears. Without the slightest trace of agitation or anxiety, he turns his heels to face you again. With disquieting poise, he slips his hand into a pocket and pulls out a knife. With an almost casual movement of his hand, it is forged steel blade springing out of the handle and flashing in the light of candles. The corners of his mouth twist into a crazy smile stretching from one ear to the other. Let's see if we can do a little something to enhance your willingness to learn. Read entry 600. <laughs> you may now use as many venture cards as you would like to heal your injuries. Check to see how many injuries your group has in total. 16. Okay. Now you have to decide, how do you want to meet Thomas Webb? You can select any of the following options if your group meets the prerequisites. Collectively, if you have Adventure Card 31 or 66, and no more than 10 injuries. No. Okay. And are not in possession of Card 51 and 56. Uh, I don't know. We don't have those. I don't know if we have it in here. 51 and 61. 56 and 61. No. Okay. So we can't do that one. If you have Adventure Card 69, which we do, mm -hmm. and no more than 10 injuries. No. Nope. Oh, okay. One of you has Adventure Card 76. Take Adventure Card E3. If you have none of the specified cards or you do not want to use them, take Adventure Card E4. So go, you repaired the draft. We're going to try to make peace. Make peace. Hey, Dutch. Welcome in. All right. What does it say, love? All these dangers and all this suffering, just because Thomas Webb wanted the world to know his story. There's a lot of pain in this man, making him willing to literally walk over dead bodies to get his way. Oof. 712. Oof. Thomas's web look speaks volumes. An odd mix of fear and euphoria, superiority and loss of control, attack and defense can be seen in his eyes. Your numerical superiority intimidates him, but his weapon reassures him. You feel a similar inner conflict. Should you attack him or wait for him to make a mistake? Finally, a third option occurs to you and you decide by unspoken agreement that it's worth a try. You pull out the stuffed giraffe and show it to Webb. Thomas, listen. Rage and aggression give way to confusion. He pauses, eyeing the stuffed animal. Hmm. What about it? On his face, you see irritation, but also uncertainty. How dare you disturb him in this moment of victory? <laughs> it's yours, isn't it? You set the giraffe on the floor and wait for his reaction. He lowers the knife and takes a step towards the giraffe. Listen, we can help you but you have to let us. He immediately returns to his position, but now a lot more defensively. His hand trembles so violently that the blade almost vibrates. We have received your message. We understand. We know what happened to you and we want to help you. Your story has to be told. Webb is no longer emotionally capable of controlling the situation. Stress, fear, internal disintegration, all his feelings overcome him at the same time. He stares motionless into space and drops the knife. That's all I wanted, he says with a quaking voice, more to himself than to you. That's all I ever wanted. He falls to his knees and gives in to his fate and his hopelessness. Knowing that he cannot win no matter how hard he fights, 
He picks up the giraffe and folds his arms around it. As soon as you are sure that he no longer poses any danger, you take him into custody. With the key on his belt, you free the hostages from the shipping container, and they embrace you gratefully. Soon there are police, firefighters, and medical personnel on site. Webb is led away, and the nightmare is finally over. Entry 1000. We did it! We offered peace, even though he's crazy. Where's one? Oh, there it is. It doesn't take long for Thomas Webb to be interrogated. At first, he refuses to cooperate at all, remains silent, stares into the air, ignores your ex-colleagues. But when you face him together, he starts to talk. Ernest Webb, his father, was never the loving parent that he pretended to be. Thomas was locked up, had to go hungry, was mistreated. The fire was no accident, but a desperate attempt to escape a life of suffering that a child should never have to live through. Things didn't go much better for young Thomas at St. Mary's either. Frederick Bergquist had already appeared in medical journals along with Watson Freeman with revolutionary contributions to the treatment of mentally ill patients. For the sanitori san sanatorium, the caring curtain was nothing but a cover for performing gruesome experiments on broken people. Hmm. When Thomas wasn't being tortured in the asylum's basement, he was tormented by the other patients. Hit laughed at, all in an attempt to compensate for their own helplessness through violence and malice. After St. Mary's closed, Thomas disappeared. He made his way on the street, trying to work through what he was never able to overcome, and that is how he finally hatched his plan to get revenge. He wanted to make the entire world learn how people like him are, mis are treated, what it's like to live in fear and to suffer every day. Diana Collins Clark, Christina Rowland and Ray Plaza were deliberately selected. All three were the offspring of employees who witnessed what was done to the patients. Even if they hardly came into contact with Thomas Webb, he believed that they deserved what he did to them. Thanks to you, he achieved his goal. His story adorns the front page of every local paper, and there are even nationwide reports on his pitiable life, grotesque deeds, and wretched end. Uh. 400. Congratulations. You have successfully concluded the adventure. Now calculate how many points you gain or lose by the adventure cards and tokens in your possession. Take adventure card E5. Ooh. How do we calculate our score? We got a Dutch Yoda? Yep. Where's E5? Okay, we get one point per star symbol. Oh gosh, we have a lot. Three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have a lot in our briefcase. 10, 11, 12, 13, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 26, 29, 31. Okay. Okay, so we got 31. Plus one point per battery token. We don't have any left. Zero. Minus one per exclamation point that we encountered. We had one. Yep. Minus one per injury. Oh, God. So minus 16 because we ran into everything. Oh, God. Minus one point for each... For every card that Simon is holding onto under his character. Oh, it said to keep it. The lucky penny. Didn't it say? Uh-huh. Add up the points and look at page 15. So we have 31 minus 16 is 15, 14, 13 points. Okay. We're right in smack dab in the middle. For you, risk and efficiency are kept in balance. That is the basis for a long and successful career as a detective. Very good. Yay, we did it. All right. Definitely going to have to put a content warning on this for VOD. Like, Yes. That got into some really... Yes, I will make sure to do that on all of matter. them. Yeah. But I love that we, we were able to break down his walls. Right. 
and with the giraffe, the yeah. people weren't injured and things resolved well. Yeah. Hello, Cosmic Ben. Side note, I can't believe that anyone has made it past level two in this record. Yes, we have continued to play that game with other groups of people and we have still not gotten past level two. Uh, yeah, so welcome in. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this concludes the Gloom City file. I, I liked it. Yes, it was intense, but the flow seemed to work. Like it it's great definitely story. directional, it, like showed us where to go. There were a couple other um, other adventure stories that the scenarios allowed us to like, you can go down this path or this path. And then like, eventually it would like connect, but it seemed like this one was very directional. Like it was kind of telling you like, you have to go here and now you come back kind of thing. Mm -hmm. What did you think? Yeah, I, I think the story in this one is really good. I think it's, it's very emotional. Yeah. It, it's dark. Um, it deals with some really difficult things that happen within society. Yeah. Um, and I think it really showed the darkness of how some people treat the, the mentally ill and mm -hmm. um, tries to highlight the fact that they are people and they are hurting and they yeah. need help from people that are not trying to just use them. So, um, yeah, if you suffer under mental illness, like help, help is available. Yeah. Like you don't, yeah. please don't be silent. Um, and it was, it's very sad too, to see that, um, back in the day, like this was the way to cure mental illness was to perform these lobotomies, which is just horrible. Inner cronk here. Um, right, it kind of just turned people into like robots, right? Like, yeah. Like, so it wasn't trying to help them, it was just. Yeah. Yeah, but um, I thought it was a cool story. I yeah. thought it had some nice suspenseful things happening. Um, it was really well written and it was one of, yeah, I agree. I think it was one of the better ones. I. I think I might have liked the um, the Grand Hotel Abaddon, Abaddon mm -hmm. a little better. Yeah. Uh, I like the ghosts. And sure, the sure, 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 sure. Um, yeah. But this one was really good. Yeah. So recommend. Uh, I will say, too, on the box, it does say ages 16 and up. Um, and I will make sure to put a disclaimer on the VODs so that people know when they go into it. Uh, they have that prepared. So, yeah. But for now, friends, I'm going to send you over to Joe Sondow because he and Ambi are doing their puzzlings. Puzzles. It's Monday night puzzle time. So if you are a subscriber to the channel, please feel free to use the CCG Raid emotes. Otherwise, some basic emotes are fine. Um, not sure what my streaming schedule is. I kind of want to get back into some mini painting, so that might happen this week. Um, but otherwise, keep an eye out on Discord and on Blue Sky when I will be raiding. Thank you to David for always joining me in these fun adventures. And like I said, we do have a stack of, of uh, games that we need to go through because we've been given review copies. So check out for some uh, upcoming fun content in the future. Uh, but until then, friends, stay safe, enjoy your board games, be kind to one another, and we'll catch you all on the next stream. Have a good week, y'all. Bye.